Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. So you may have noticed that things look a little different right now uh, from the last three episodes. So um, this episode is about audio. Guess what? The audio, I need to stop hitting the desk here or else the thing vibrates. Um, so uh, the <clears throat> episode four of the, of or you know, part four of this six part series, the audio the audio quality wasn't bad, it just wasn't syncing up with the video. So I've gone back to doing, um, I'm using the phone as my camera. Uh, I'm not using the webcam. Um, where is the webcam? Yeah, you know, I had a picture of it. Oh, it's like underneath all that. I don't know if I can, I can't get to it. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so here's the thing. Uh, you know how I, I like to play the game theory versus reality occasionally. And in theory, everything that I did for the first all six all six uh, shows um, should, in theory, have worked fine. Um, but in reality, uh, since I'd never had played with a webcam and doing what I was doing this time, I mean, I I did like you know like a, a Google Hangout whatever, um, and I did some Skype testing, but um, somehow for some reason, recording into the computer from the webcam is not very good. Um, and I won't go through all the technical details, but it just was bogging the computer down. And as a result, there was syncing issues um, with audio and video. Some of it has to do with some settings and all that, which I've been struggling with over the past few months in trying to get things to be synced up. I'll, I'll, maybe I'll touch upon that a little bit later. Um, but the computer literally was lagging and dropping frames. And so things, you couldn't line stuff up. So. Uh, I'm recording episodes four, five, and six, or parts four, five, and six again. So I did my shirt on, and all that. Hopefully the video looks even better because I'm actually using the I'm using the computer. I mean, I'm using the, the phone on a true 1080p, um, a higher quality level on that rather than the webcam, which was only doing 720p. Um, the, the, you have to do some trickery, not trickery. You have to use some like special third-party software to get it to do 1080p and I tried to do it um, today's Tuesday I tried to do it on Monday the uh, the 10th and it, anything everything I could do with this wasn't working I couldn't get everything in sync so now that we got that out of the way let's get into audio so first things first um, people in general at least my opinion and at least that's how I view it people in general will put up with crappy video but not crappy audio. So let's think about it. like I listen to a lot or listen to a decent amount of audio podcasts. And if they don't have at least a halfway decent audio, then I, I can't listen to it. I get I'm, I'm done. Video, at least, you know, you can watch the video and if it's a little grainy, a little bit not so great, um, but the audio is good and you can follow along and the, things are fairly synced up, then you're good. Um, so the first thing is uh, in, in, in audio is try to avoid using, try to avoid your audio being only the, the uh, audio where the, that the camera, um, the microphone, the camera is picking up the on camera mic as is known. Um, they typically as, as a general rule, no matter what camera you're using, whether it's the phone, webcam, uh, DSLR, digital camera, whatever it is, uh, as a general rule, they tend to not be the best quality microphones. Um, Let's see here. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll get we'll get to more about mics in a little bit here. Input levels. Uh, no matter how you record, more specifically on 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 all that, make sure you set the input level high enough to capture you, but avoid going into the red. So um, I'm going to use my um, thing here. So if you can see here, hopefully you can see. I don't know the the reflections. There we go. That might be good. 
trying to make sure that the green doesn't reflect because because if it reflects green, it means you're not gonna be able to see it. So you should be able to see the one um, on this side, on this side, the, um, the the little meter. And I shouldn't be going too much into the red. Now I might do like this really loud and it goes into the red, but you, you wanna try to avoid the red, try to be in the green. Um, as far as a number, um, that's right between minus 12 and minus six dB as in decibel. So you wanna to try to be um, in that area and then you can boost it a little bit um, when you're when you're doing your post when you're doing your editing but the reason you 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 have your level set kind of low is so that if you have a, something loud like somebody like me all of a sudden gets loud in an interview uh, or, or just talking you've got a little headroom you've got you know, you're not clipping out um, the th this recorder it, you, the, this this red light here um, when it when I'm clipping, it'll blink, it'll flash if I'm clipping, and so I don't have to actually look at the little meter. <clears throat> um, let's see here. Uh, some devices can compensate for this, but even then the audio can suffer. So in this particular case, this, um, this uh, audio recorder does have um, compression and limiting, or you know, a compressor and a limiter, so that helps with that. But again, once it's clipped, it's clipped. I mean, you, it, the limiter just means it won't go above a certain volume, but if you're clip, if you're if you're clipping, it's still gonna it's still gonna be noticeable. <clears throat> All right, microphones. All right, so you have several different microphones. Um, I didn't bring my shotgun. Uh, I have a shotgun mic, so you, uh, we'll start with that one. The shotgun mic. So uh, there are plenty, plenty out there for all kinds of cameras, including smartphones. Uh, believe it or not, Rode makes one uh, very popular. They're usually not the cheapest, um, but they're very very effective. Um, especially if you, if you're going to be really close to the camera. So, uh, with these, what these, um, microphones do, um, just think of it like it's a shotgun. So it's a, it you know, has a, I'll use this as, as, as I'm looking at, I'm using my iPad as my, I don't know why I keep looking at it. it I'm framed fine. Um, anyway, so imagine this adapter that I have on that recorder and the shotgun mic, you know, goes. It's actually a little bit longer than the pencil, but say it goes about this long. Okay, it's a little bit wider and all that, and it's very directional. Um, so it, what it does is it's, it, it captures everything right in front. Now, some of these shotgun mics have a little, um, it's called cardioid um, uh, pattern where they can get stuff kind of on the side, but um, for the most part, they're like directly in the front. They're great, like in a situation like this, where I have nothing behind me other than a green screen, um, so there's no activity behind me. That would be outstanding because um, you're not going to pick up any sound back there. Whereas if there's sound on the other side of the camera, it might pick it up a little bit, but it won't be so direct. Um, but they tend to be kind of pricey. You tend to have to have a battery for that too. So you have to be careful. You almost always have to put a fresh battery in for every session um, or use like rechargeable batteries. I, I'm a big proponent of in this type of stuff, rechargeable batteries, like, you know, whether it's the batteries for the, um, um, like a battery like this for, for your, uh, for your camera or, you know, rechargeable batteries like this for other devices. They even make uh, nine volt rechargeable batteries. Like if you have like a lavalier, which about hit, uh, wireless lavalier mics. So lavalier, uh, so that's what this is right here. Um, so you attach it, you can attach it directly to the camera. So, uh, in this case, I don't have that. I don't have a, I think I have a, I think I have another lavalier hanging around. One of my cheap ones laying around. Maybe not. Uh, anyway, um, you can plug. A lot of times you plug these lavaliers into the camera, so that's actually ideal. What I'm doing, it's probably a little overkill, um, especially because it's just me. But I have found in the past with a video camera, when I was plugging directly into the camera, I was getting some some bad hum. And I don't know, and it's because you're getting 60 cycle from the, the outlet that the camera was plugged into. In this case, I highly doubt I would get any hum, but since the phone is plugged into the computer USB port for power, um, it, it's a lightning cable. Now, I, I will tell you this. No, that's not it. I do have one of these. Maybe I'll remember to put this in the shift notes. Um, this actually does power Maybe you can see power and audio at the same time. Um, I don't know if it does microphone audio, but it definitely does like headphone, like you can listen to, to music and charge at the same time. A lot of these are 
useless because the spec, I guess, doesn't really call for light lightning, but this one actually works. Um, actually, does, yeah, you can do microphone because I've done my, uh, my um, smule. Um, I like the saying, do karaoke. I'm not great. I'm okay. I'm average. But um, there's, a, there's an app on your phone that you can get called Smule and you can, do, you can do karaoke stuff. So I've done that where my end of the night and the phone's kind of dead. Not dead, but low battery. I've done that. I keep looking in the middle of the phone instead of right there. Um, anyway, so um, you can taxi directly to the camera. Uh, all smartphones can do this. Um, lightning, the lightning port on iPhones does require an adapter, as you just saw. Um, let's see here. And just about all video cameras do, and almost all, and then digital cameras, it's a, I call it a mixed bag because uh, not all of them have the input that you need. So, um, dang it, I really wanted to, oh, you know what, I can, I can do this. I think this is what I did the original videos I used. I used my headphones as an example. So when you, when you're doing this and you're plugging stuff in, so, um, actually no, I, I, I used to use a lot earlier. So if you look on this one and I'm gonna, I don't know if it's fo in focus, hopefully you can see there's three distinct rings on here. One, two, and three. So these, this is my head, these are my uh, headphones. These are really good headphones for like a hundred bucks. Um, so for an iPhone, and I, I don't think for all the, all the other phones, but iPhone for sure, you need three rings. And I forgot, that there's like there's like a, a, a an abbreviation for it. I think it's called TRR, and TR is one with only two rings. So the three rings mean that you're getting, you know, it's like for, for headphones, you're getting audio and you're also getting input, microphone. Whereas there's only two rings, you're not get, getting everything. So when you're if you're going to do that with inputting you got to make sure you've got the proper number of rings if you're plugging into a phone uh digital cameras um and video cameras you shouldn't need to because there's they're not there's not do, that that port isn't doing output also so you shouldn't have to worry about that um i said or you can connect it to one of these all right um Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Anyway, um, wireless. So I had, um, when I first, when I first started, but shortly after I started, I played around with some wireless lavaliers and in general, they're great. Um, uh, I, I, I put down this guy's a bit fancy. Um, but you know, the, the, the advantage is you don't have a wire. You're not, I'm not like tied down, like with, with the audio recorder, I can't move too much. I mean, I have a really long, I got a really long cable here. I think it's like 12 feet long. This is really meant so that when I'm out in the field doing interviews, people don't have to be on top of each other. They can kind of be spread out. Um, so uh, wireless, you know, it's wireless. You don't have to worry about any people tripping over wires. Um, you don't have to worry about moving. Or if someone wants to get up and move around, you can't. Like if I wanted to get up, the reason I didn't get up and do some stuff is I'm wired. Now I could bring this with me, but I'm also have it hooked up to one of these things as my battery. So... Um, it's a lot of carton stuff around. Um, anyway, so you have no chance to pull on the wire and make the camera fall over, which is, you know, you don't want to do that. Or the mic just popping off your, your shirt. Um, let's see here. Or, or, you know, your recorder. The disadvantage of these things though, is that there is radio interference that can exist, um, in, in, you know, in your house, in someone's business. Uh, I mean, we all have these, we all have these, you know, mobile devices that are on Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and cell. And I can tell you that I, I've, I've experienced it with the wireless mics and every once in a great while with wired mics, if they're not insulated properly. Um, if when, when your cell phone is like accessing the, the network, um, you'll get like this little crackle, this little buzzing sound. Um, so wireless is great, except for the interference. Um, let's see here. Also, a lot of these wireless microphones uh, don't have like a battery strength indicator on there. So like I mentioned with like the shotgun mic, you a lot of times have to put a fresh set of batteries in there. I talked about, and, you know, rechargeables are great for that. Um, a really, just a regular old microphone, like, you know, like, you know, like the, like a reporter has out in the field. Uh, sure makes one, I think it's called the, uh, the M58 or 58M or 57 or something like that. It's like a workhorse. I don't know how, I don't know how much it is. If I remember, I'll, I'll put it in the lower third, how much one of those are on Amazon. Um, but uh, you still have a cable, um, but you typically get really good audio quality from those things. 
and um, um, you're using it like in a microphone, like I'm sorry, an interview situation. So you have to remember like, okay, I'm talking, then you're talking, I'm talking, you're talking. You can't just like, you have to remember to, to move the microphone in front of the person so that whoever's talking so you can pick it up. Because if I hold the mic in front of you and I'm interviewing you and all of a sudden I ask a question, I forgot to do this, you might hear it, but it won't be, it won't be as loud. Uh, Bluetooth headphones and headsets. Um, so mobile devices, computers, like your laptop and all that. You can do these. Um, I say, I, I also say you can even include like these types of things. These are, when they're wired, they're much, much better. Okay. Um, with Bluetooth, uh, the problem is the audio quality can, can be really variable. Sometimes they can be okay, sometimes not. It's really, it's not, it's not the audio you're hearing, it's, it's the microphone it's being, that's being recorded. Um, it, it can drop out a lot. If you're gonna use, if you're gonna use something like that, like something that comes with your phone, then use your earbuds, whatever, whatever earbuds come with your phone, that microphone. You'll see a lot of times on these uh, newscasts, uh, Sony is on their laptop and they're going, they're doing Skype and they have that because if you don't do that, then the audio gets really, really bad with, with all the echo in the room. Um, audio recorder. So this, so, uh, first of all, well, this, this is, this is my fancy schmancy one. Uh, so first of all, let's talk about what they are. So, um, in many ways they are the best option for audio quality. Uh, some of them have built in mics and some of them have swappable mics like these. Okay, um, and they're typically really good quality. Uh, you can plug in all styles of mics, so you can do shotgun, you can do um, uh, lavalier directly into it. Um, and you can even attach, a lot of times you can even attach it to um, uh, a shoe, what they call a shoe on a camera. So um, if you look here on the bottom, there's a hole right there, and then on this one, there's a hole right there. And these you can mount on your cameras. Uh, or in, in the case like with my phone here, you can mount it on the, um, the tripod or, or the, 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 um, the thing that's holding the phone. Now the one I have, so the tripod I'm using uh, came with, um, well actually is this tripod, where's my other tripod? I just had it out somewhere. Oh, right here. So I was talking about tripods the other, you know, one of the other shows. So this one, the, uh, the one that comes with this is great, except that if you want to attach a light, it doesn't have like a thing on top. And I can't show you that because I'm using the phone. Um, but you can also put like a, not a light, but you can put a microphone or any other accessory on there. Um, let's see here. Um, they are designed to record audio. So depending on how fancy you want to get, you can adjust recording levels, per channel levels, noise gate compression. I kind of mentioned that already. So, um, for the longest time I used this, the Handy Zoom H1N. This thing is actually, it's $99. It is pretty incredible for what it is. There are other ones out there for about the same price. And honestly, they're all about the same as far as quality levels. They're all pretty good. Um, a lot of people use the Zoom. Really easy to use. Uh, on the back, you'll have, um, you have like a, what they call a low cut, which helps with like low frequency sounds. So like air conditioning sounds, or you know, a car rumbles by it. It 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 it, the cu it cuts off anything below a certain frequency. Um, so you, you're kind of losing a little bit of bass, but this cutoff frequency is actually not that not that high as far as like cutting off bass. Um, you also have uh, an audio level, like automatic audio level, and then you had then it tells you which format, wave or MP3. Um, the audio level on this one I leave is off because I don't want I want the I want to set the input level on this instead of it trying to figure it out. Um, and then wave to me, wave is a little bit more compatible or easier to use than MP3, but honestly they both work. Um, but it's really simple. Um, it's really great for one person. Okay. Like what I do, uh, or interview situation is super light, super compact. And you do the, ch -ch -ch -ch. if you look on here, you see that it's got what they call the X, Y mics that helps with the stereo separation. It helps with the helps with getting a higher quality audio rather than just a straight up like, well, this is a pretty good microphone, but you know, if it was like one microphone that was straight out, that wasn't necessarily shotgun. Um, then you get, and then handy or zoom, however you want to call it. They make several models. This is their top end model. This is their, their top of the line model. It's called the zoom H H six. Um, and the basic thing about this is, so you see that there's 
two inputs, two inputs. Um, there's these little things you can, little adapters you can put in there. You can buy an adapter that gives you two more inputs. I bought this one not because I wanted to be fancy. Oh, that's my sunglasses. Um, but because they have a, they have the H4, they have an H2 and an H4. So you can think about this. The number means how many inputs it has. The H4 is four inputs and it doesn't have a thing here where you can add, or maybe it does. There was a reason why I didn't get the H4. I got this instead. I'm pretty sure because you can't add a module for two more inputs. Um, so with that said, uh, I typically never, ever, ever have more than three guests on a show. In fact, I can't remember if I've ever had more than three guests on a show. Um, so four inputs in general is plenty for me, but I wanted expandability. And this one just was a just overall better. It wasn't that much more expensive to get this one versus the H4. Um, but this thing is like, this is like semi-pro. And I'm not quite, I mean, I'm, I try to do my best with audio, but this is like semi-pro. This is like really good stuff. Um, let's see, where am I at on that? Oh, anyway, so like I've already mentioned that you can have separate inputs, so you can you can adjust the levels on all these. There's you know effects on there called compressors and limiters. Uh, so a limiter, I've already mentioned what it does, but a compressor it kind of it kind of keeps things uh, from being too loud and too soft. It kind of compress it compresses it. I mean that's why it's called a compressor. Um, low cut filter. This one has that, but this one has like. Um, like more of them, like more frequencies you can do, and a whole bunch of other little things you can do on the unit. Um, so it's pretty good. Um, let's see here, cheaper units. So something like this for years and years and years and years. Um, and the reason I wanted something more than with one input like this is that you know, when, you, when I plug it in and I have, say, an, a, a guest or more than one guest, I'm using a splitter. And you can tell I talk loud, right? Well, not everybody I interview talks loud. So sometimes the levels aren't that great. So with this, with with the with this or something very similar, I can adjust each person's level based upon how loud they talk. Um, okay, uh, so various levels of portability. These, this one, super portable, super light, throw in your backpack. This one is a little more bulky, obviously. Um, it does come with this case. Um, you don't have to use the case, but I have everything else in there. I've put like a lavalier in there. I put my dead cat in there. I keep these in here. Um, not that I necessarily will use them, but on, just in case I need to use it or I, a, a good case scenario to use these. Um, so it keeps everything there and, 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 and nice and compact and not flying around your backpack. Um, let's see. Uh, and then the, the downside though is you have to sync the audio to your video. So since unless you're plugging in directly to the camera, so if you do that, everything should sync perfectly and everyone's happy. And what I have to do, and what a lot of people do with these lavalier mics and these recorders, is you have to sync up. Now, how do you do that? Um, the easiest way is, now before I started this video, I clapped. I usually clap three times so you can get a good consistent spike. And the microphone on the camera and the microphone here pick up those spikes and you line them up and in a perfect world, that's all you have to do. Even when videos are 20 minutes long, like this one already, or 40 minutes long or an hour long, it stays synced all the way. There's something called audio drift. And the, 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 the really basic reason of that is the, if you don't have your audio settings on the camera matching with the audio settings on your recorder, that you, things kind of, get out of sync over time. Um, the video rate also supposedly has an issue with that. So like if you don't record the video at 30 frames per second, um, you record at 60, it can, it might kind of mess things up. I'm now recording this at 30 because I, I did some research while trying to fix all the problems yesterday. So I normally have been putting the, the phone on 60 and I don't think there's really a problem with it, but I had noticed there were some drift issues. Now it's on 30. But I also knew that I didn't have every setting audio wise exactly in sync with everything. So hopefully these three episodes, everything's great. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but anyway, it can be a hassle. And if, if it's not working out right, like it wasn't, um, there are some tricks depending on what audio, what, uh, what uh, software you're using, whether it's audio software or video editing software, that you can do it to get back in sync. But some things are more easier than others. Some programs are easier to work than others. Uh, post-production. Uh, so 
your video editor of choice will most likely have good enough audio editing capabilities, like I've already kind of mentioned. Audio will tend to have also a compressor limiter plug-in. Um, this is also called normalizing your audio. Um, so again, you're trying to keep things, um, trying to make sure they don't go above a certain volume, but also make sure quiet parts are, you can hear the quiet parts. Um, usually, I usually, I, I typically use the default settings in those. Your uh, software also will tend to have an EQ setting. So, um, you can do it or not, it doesn't matter. Um, but if you add, if you do EQ your voice, it can make it sound better. I guarantee you, everybody on television, everybody in the movies, they are, they, they EQ these voices, whether it's live TV or not, because, um, so I don't know if I'll do this without my EQ, but let's say I am. So right now, this is how I sound without any EQ. Um, and when I do the EQ, there's different things that are being adjusted. Usually the bass to give you a little more depth a little more oomph, um, and that's typically what you do. Um, you'll typically add a bit of bass. You might boost the mid-range for clarity um, because that's pretty much where our voice sits is like kind of a mid-range. Um, and then um, if you can boost the treble if you like it, uh, if you want. Um, to play around with it. I have a couple of presets. I have a preset that I use from Larry Jordan. Um, it, it's a good overall, like gives me a little bit of a boost. It gives a little more clarity. Um, also realize that men as a whole, as a, as a general rule, tend to have deeper voices and women tend to have higher voices. So if you're trying to get a little more depth to, to somebody, if they're a woman, you probably have to boost the bass a little bit more than you do for a man. But most men, unless they're like, you know, really deep voice, they're going to have to, oh wow, Siri's trying to dictate what I just said. Um, unless they're like a super deep voice, you're probably going to have to give them a little bit of oomph to it. Um, and then that's where you'll do your syncing between uh, an audio recorder and that. Music. All right, so um, the intro music I have, um, the outro music I have, um, these are all music, these are all pieces of music that I either um, had specially composed for me or I bought the rights to use. Please, 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 whatever you do, don't steal someone else's stuff. Now, I know it's really tempting, um, and if you're like talking over, there's ways to kind of get around it. And if th that song might be perfect for you. Um, if you, you want to use that as your intro, but realize that any of these other like professional TV shows or other types of shows that are maybe using a pop song, they've paid the rights most likely for that. They've, they've paid a royalty to use that. They're not just using it. Now they may have started off doing that and then get a cease and desist letter. And then they go, Oh, I'm sorry. And then they like work out a deal, but try, try not to do that. Um, if it's like incidental background music, like say you're at a bar or a restaurant or, or some type of event and there's, there's music playing in the background, most likely you're not going to get in trouble with the YouTube police, the copyright police on YouTube. Um, you should be fine, but just be aware of that. Um, if I'm, if I'm like in a restaurant and I can turn off the music, I just do it just because it's extra bit of distraction. Not, I'm not really worried about the copyright issues. Um, let's see here. Uh, but you want outro and intro music. So my intro music, um, I paid for, I had a gentleman by the name of Mark Blasco, um, create it. Now he creates a lot of jingles in general, but what I know him from is from the twit network, this week in tech network. Um, he's composed, I think almost all of their intro and outro music. And, uh, it was really reasonable. Like my intro music, I think was like 50 or $75 total maybe a hundred. I could have paid like a little bit extra for me to have the exclusive rights to the intro music, but I kind of figured that, well, who's going to use it? And if they do, that's fine. I'm not really worried about it. But what I did do is I found some music out there on the internet, royalty free music or music you could buy the rights to. And I said, I'd like, I'd like my song to sound kind of like this, but then I also want it to sound like, and I use music he already did. I said, I want it to sound very similar to uh, security now, which is the computer security podcast I listen to. Um, and I also threw out some pop music songs to kind of give them an idea of a style that I wanted. Um, let's see here. I'm looking at the wrong thing. Uh, so <clears throat> anyway, so you have that. You also have other websites that, that will you can buy the rights to use uh, songs. There's a ton of them out there. Uh, not all of them are necessarily expensive. And then um, if, you've watched, if you've watched me for a long time, my Halloween episode, I have a specific song for that. And it's kind of a Tim Burton-ish feel to it. So I paid that. Um, but because of that song, 
keep your receipt. Absolutely keep your receipts. The electronic receipts, don't, don't like delete the email. Because if you're on YouTube or maybe you have some other service, video service, um, you know if I'm blinking weird, my eyes are getting my eyes are getting dried out from my contacts. Pardon me, I'm going to re-wet my re-wet my eyes here. Because it's just bugging me. Alright. Woo! God look, I'm crying. Anyway, um oh, that's so much better. Anyway, um, keep your receipt because what happened to me is several years ago with YouTube is they were claiming that I was using copyrighted music. Um, no, that's only on my personal account that I did that. Um, but on this account, <clears throat> I don't. So I had to, they had to, um, they wanted me to prove that I had um, bought the music or I had the rights to use it. So you send in that. Um, let's see here. All right, talk about Mark Blasco. There'll be uh, links down below for that. I think that's it. Wow. Okay. So 30 minutes. So that's audio. I mean, the bottom line is I'm, I'm not going to teach you how to, how to actually do the audio editing. I mean, I've gave you some hints and tips. Um, it's really just about the equipment that you want to use. Um, the lavalier mics I was using for like, I don't know, like seven years were 99 cents on Amazon. I got laughed out of some Reddit or whatever, um, Tumblr, I don't know, some, some, uh, some chat room or whatever, because they were asking, someone was asking for advice, like, you know, for on a budget on the cheap, what do you use? I said, well, I use these from, from newer or a newer or whatever is N E E W E R. And I almost, I basically that literally laughed out. Oh, I can't believe you're using that. I'm like, well, once you look at my videos and hear how the audio sounds, it's actually pretty darn good. This, this, uh, microphone, um, because of because of how it's designed, see this connector with the XLR. Um, actually, it requires phantom power, so I don't have to put a battery in there. Some lavaliers require batteries. This one doesn't, um, so it's getting the power from the actual audio recorder. Um, and this is I don't know, like thirty five dollars, and honestly, it is the is the sound thirty times more or thirty times better than that lavalier that I had. The other lavalier, probably not, but. It, it, I need that kind of lavalier for this microphone, for this uh, audio recorder. So that's what I did. Um, trying to think of anything else I may have not talked about. It's just really just the equipment. You know, what, what can you afford? I mean, if you're starting out and you have to use the on-camera mic, that's fine. I mean, that's what I did. You know, my, my uh, 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 flip cam microphone wasn't too bad. Then I moved to the, Z, the Z8, Kodak Z8 or ZI8. The microphone was still fine, but it wasn't quite as good. And then after that, I started getting into the lavalier stuff. And, um, you know, sometimes you have to experiment what's good and what's not. All right, so that's going to do it for this episode. Um, as always, you can click the links above if you friend me up. You can click the links below about all the information, all the equipment, and all that. You can hit the uh, donate button over here to send me some ducats uh, to uh, help pay for all the equipment or whatever. Um, and uh, we'll see everyone again next time.